Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Connolly. I'd like to read to you the story, or the book rather, the nonfiction book of Goldilocks Planet. And you can find this in um, your RAS kits under the Science A to Z. So we're going to take a look at this book, The Goldilocks Planet, and I want you to think about some things. Number one, it looks like the front cover has the planet Earth on it. Number two, do you remember the story of Goldilocks? We're going to think about that as we read this story and find out why Earth is called the Goldilocks planet. So let's take a look inside. You can also find this book in your instructional packet that you received from the school. Your copy is in black and white. So you can either follow along with me and you can read your text while I'm reading or you can just kind of keep your eyes on the screen because the text is gonna show up along with in color pictures. So let's take a look inside. So, as we're reading, I'm going to grab a highlighter. Let's see, maybe I'll pick purple here. Our focus question, the question I want you to th be thinking about, right? Why is Earth just right for living things? Hmm, just like Goldilocks had things that were just right. Let's think. Let's see inside. Do you remember when Goldilocks visited the three bears? One bowl of porridge was too hot. One bowl was too cold. The last one was just right. One bed was too hard. One was too soft. The last one was just right. Earth is just right for living things. So Earth is called a Goldilocks planet. Let's find out why. So the heading on this page is called Not Too Hot not too cold. And when I look down below here, whoops, there is a diagram of our solar system. Now only part of our solar system. And it says Earth is the third planet from the sun. So let's see, I'm gonna count. We have the sun is right here, oops. And we have Mercury is one, Venus is two, Earth as three, and then Mars as four. So this is the first four planets in our solar system. So let's read what it says about not too hot and not too cold. The planets in our solar system get light from the sun. Sunlight warms the planets. Some planets are close to the sun. They are too hot for living things. Some planets are far from the sun. They are too cold. Earth's distance from the sun is just right. So, if I'm thinking like a scientist, based on what I just read, I'm thinking that Mercury and Venus must be too close to the sun, making it too hot for things to live. And Mars goes past Earth, so it must be too cold on Mars for living things. So Earth is in just the right spot. Let's find out more. The heading on this page is called A Place to Live. Whoops, let me grab my highlighter. A Place to Live. The picture below says, is a picture of Saturn and I'll highlight the caption. It says, Saturn is made of gas. It is one of the gas giants. Hmm. A place to live. Living things need a good place to live. The four planets far from the sun are made of gas. Gas is like air. It will not hold you up. You can't live on a gas planet. Whoa. So some planets are completely made out of gas. That's why they can't have living things. Interesting. So if we look at this top diagram, it says that it divides it. So this is the asteroid belt right here. If you watch my um, yellow pen come up, this is the asteroid belt right here. So the first 
four planets closest to the sun are considered solid planets. And then after the asteroid belt comes the gas planets. So the text says, the four planets closest to the sun are solid. Rocks are solid. Earth is made of rock. It can help, it can hold you up. Earth is a good place for walking. So it also shows you a picture down below of people walking along a rocky mountainside. So Earth has just the right temperature and Earth is a solid. So those are two reasons why Earth is a good place for living things. Oh, let's check this out. Here's another reason. Water to drink. And it shows a picture of Mars and it says most water on Mars is frozen. So let's find out about water to drink. Living things need water. Some planets have a little bit of water. But if the planet is too cold, the water will freeze and become ice. Hmm. If the planet is too hot, the water turns into a gas. You can't drink it. Earth has a lot of liquid water. This water fills the oceans, rivers, and lakes. Okay, so now we found out something else. Earth has water. Let's see if there's any more. Air to breathe. Air to breathe. Take a deep breath. <sighs> you are taking in some of Earth's air. But on other, other planets, the air has different gases in it. It is not safe for living things. Some planets have no air at all. Wow. So Earth has air for living things to breathe. Now the caption, this is a picture of a robot. And the caption below says, this robot is on Mars. Robots don't need air. They don't breathe. So this is the conclusion of the book. Why is Earth just right? Let's see. Earth is just the right distance from the sun. It is warm and comfortable for living things. Earth is a solid, and it has water. It also has air to breathe. That is why our planet is a Goldilocks planet. It is just right. So let's take a look at Goldilocks's checklist, and I'm gonna grab some checks for us. So it says Goldilocks checklist. The first um, feature, the first bullet is, is the planet a good temperature for living things? So Earth, just right, check. Is the planet a solid? Check. Does it have water that living things can drink? Check. Does it have air that living things can breathe? Absolutely. Check. Is it a good place for living things? Well, we're living on it and plants and animals and many, and many, many little creatures. So I would give it a check. Nice job. Thanks for joining me during this read aloud. Next week, I'm going to post two more on space and I hope to have you join me then too. Bye everyone.